wetu limegundua uh, jambo moja ambalo limekuwa liki, likizungumzwa na wengine pamoja na askofu wetu neno moja ambalo nimejua na nimekuwa nimelijua lakini kama niliwekewa mkazo ni kwamba baraka zako zimebebwa na binadamu mwingine sio mnyama baraka zako zimebebwa na binadamu mwingine kwa hivyo ni vizuri kuheshimu binadamu mwingine kwa sababu ni tu haujafunuliwa atakaye kuokoa wakati atakuokoa ujui atakaye kuwa wa, wa msaada kwako kwa lakini baraka zako zimeunganishwa na mtu your destiny is also pegged to someone and what the book of chronicles says that um, you believe in the lord your god and you will be established is also true but he finishes by saying also believe his prophet and you shall prosper so the issue of prosperity is pegged with a person so that's why it's good for you to honor people because your blessing is pegged with someone i've always said sit well in church you'll never know whether the guy is sitting next to you anaweza kuchomolea ngiri tu tukija kuondoka akwambie wewe umekaa vizuri sana hii ngiri enda ukakunywe soda so it's always good to know your blessing is next to your person also because the blessing is with your next person when i tell you to talk to them talk to them nicely don't be shy just talk to them nicely tell them who you are tell them the kind of jobs that you do because you will never know some connection can start from here unaweza pata church kazi hapa hapa tu umeongea na mtu akawa alikuwa akitafuta engineer na we ni engineer lakini wengine tukiwaambia muzungumze mmoja na mwingine mnaniangaliaga tu mimi si semi unizungumzie nataka uzungumzie aliye karibu kwa sababu labda sitakusikia na itakuwa ni msaada mkubwa kwako bwana yesu apewe sifa na tumeona mambo makubwa katika hayo safari yote tuli conclude hatukuwa na pancha yoyote hakukuwa na watu walipata msiba wowote tulienda vizuri na tukafika isipokuwa tuli ilikuwa ni, ni kitu ni marathon kwa hivyo uongozi ni mgumu kidogo unalala kitanda cha malikia hapa alafu unaenda unalala kitanda ambacho kinaimba unapolala unaoga na maji moto hapa unakuta maji moto hapa hiyo ni historia unaoga na baridi amen amen unaoga hapa hapa unalala na blanket na unaweka hita alafu unateremka unafika mahali ambapo hata nguo kuwa nayo itakuwa ni shida kubwa sana you, you understand what i'm talking so you sleep here you wake up the other place you don't get sleep then you wake up then you you know fear there and if you have a problem of sleep, sleeping on strange beds it becomes very hard so every night you have to pray a prayer god i declare that this bed is going to align itself so that as i sleep i will sleep and wake up fresh so i don't want to take for granted the other two routes that we have uh, mombasa and dar es salaam we pray that you pray for us and it will be well blessed be the name of the lord we are talking about open heaven because this is the year of an open heaven but you know what the real key is not that the heaven is not open the key is lord open my eyes because i've been talking about your destiny your people but unless you open your eyes so that you can see who is that person that is is cut to help you who is that person your eyes have to be opened like the story i told you of elisha and we saw elisha has a, has no problem he is asleep and well and yet his servant is wondering what is happening we have been surrounded but when the eyes of the servant were open he saw that they have been protected all through and the question is when the protection appear is it when he opened his eyes that protection was always there so when your eyes are open you will know then that your protection and your care is always there blessed be the name of the lord and today i want to share with you when the heavens are shut that god can release the miraculous when the heavens are shut or shutting the heavens so that god can release the miraculous and this is a story of a servant of the lord called elijah the bible says in first kings 17 verse 1 and elijah toshbai the toshbite who was the inhabitant of gilead said unto ahab as the lord god of israel liveth before whom i stand there shall not be dew 
no rain this year, but it is according to my word. That's what the servant of the Lord tell, tells Ahab. But the first thing that we need to know is what is happening around Elijah at this time. You see, 1 Kings 17 begins with end. It was a time of great spiritual darkness, if you like. Ahab had provoked God more than any other king in the history of Israel. 1 Kings 16 and verse 33, King James says, And Ahab made a groove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In other words, Elijah is coming up when there is a king who has decided to provoke God into anger. He, everything he does, Ahab does, comes to provoke God. The problem with Ahab actually is not that he was necessarily a wicked man, but Ahab was weak in terms like he could not defend the God of Israel. When he married Jezebel, for political reasons, he could not stand and fight for the Lord God that he had trusted in. And I want to speak to someone and say it is the same thing to you. If you are not able to defend that God, how do you expect that God to defend you? How do you expect God to open doors and the windows of heaven for you if you cannot even stand for him? So this is the time that Elijah is showing up. And you see, for Ahab, he fell under a spell. And the spell came from the wife that he married. And this lady, Jezebel, she built a temple to Astrid the Jezreite that supported 450 priests. She built a temple even in Samaria, the capital city. She surrounded the land with the shrines and groves to the king Baal. She started tearing down as many altars of Jehovah as she could find. And you know what the statement here is also key. What is neglected, if you have neglected something, if you neglect something, it will break down. So even the altars that were beautiful at one time because the kings were good, because at this time they were not used, they were broken down and Jezebel just brought them down. So the priests of Baal were everywhere, were everywhere, everywhere. And once all the temples of Baal were completed, this lady went to an, offens an offensive and cracked upon the fires to prosecute with a passion anybody that believed in Jehovah our God. Prophets were hunted down and killed. They wandered about in the land in goat skins and sheep skin. And Obadiah the prophet was a lonely prophet and he was in Ahab's house. He managed to hide a few of them in a cave. So even Obadiah had some prophets of Jehovah that he had hidden them somewhere. He did his best to shield them from the wrath of the terrible queen. But the Bible indicates that there were 7,000 who were hidden away. But they, even wherever they were hidden, they were paralyzed with fear. So when you look at it from a simple point of logic, it appears that all was lost. But the fact of the matter was that the nation could not have been in a condition more ripe for revival than that one. In other words, even when uh, Jezebel had done all that she had done, as far as God was concerned, that was the way for revival. Because the way for revival is when things don't go right. When do we pray most in this country? We pray most after five, five years. We even fast and cry. And when do we start crying? When there is fire in Kodele. When there is fire in Huruma here. When there is fire in Kibera. That's the time we rise up and we pray with the passion. My prayer is, let's pray even now for the country we want, for the leaders we want, for the church we want, and for the family we want even now before we get into chaos and problems. Because when we have problems, that is the time we cry the most. And we blame everybody. In the book of Isaiah 59 and verse 19, the Bible says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. 
When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. How does he do it? It's because we are in prayer, then God will raise a standard against the devil and the demons that are chasing you. So what, that is the period, the time that Elijah is showing up. So Elijah comes up. Where is he coming from? He comes from the west of the Jordan River. It was a wild and rough land. It was a schoolhouse that God was using to train his prophet, the prophet of fire. Because the Bible says Elijah is a prophet of fire. And it is good for you and me not to cast the place that the Lord has brought us from. Because God knew, and you are all total sum of where you are born, the school you went to, the friends you made, the village you are at the moment. You are total of that. You cannot cast the place that the Lord has placed you because God will use you and you'll be propelled by the place that you come from. I love Karatega Akurino. It doesn't matter how broken it is. That is my village. That is my village. That is my village. So when you are passing to the beautiful land in Kenangofu and you see the rocks down there, please, please, where and queen. That's where I was born. I love. I'm looking at those ladies. They pass my village as they go to their beautiful land that flows with milk and honey, which they sell to us in the name of the Lord. Why do I love that place? Because as I talk about it, the Lord uses the same place to lift me as his prophet so that I can prophesy to others that are in rock areas. You know, a couple of years ago, we landed in Kisumu. Our church is very near Kondele. And people from Kisumu, you know Kondele, thank God for the, the road that is up. You know, there is a road they build which is up, so you can see the stone throwers down there. The police go up to put tear gas. In that Kondele area, the church was in a swampy area. I remember when I went there for the first time, they had a very small church. It was about 25 years ago, 25 years ago, yes. And they were in a small class. We, we would get through some marshy area. So one time, four years ago, we, we landed there and we told the pastor, now Bishop Elisha, told Elisha, plant some mangoes here. And we helped him plant some mangoes. Alice can tell you the temptation we were feeling. Because those mangoes are heavy. They are big. They are huge. They are saying, wait for me to ripen and sit down here and eat me. So there are things that God is going to do. And he's going to use you and the village that you come from. Can you imagine Elisha would be saying, oh, I wish I was born in Makweni. Where mangoes now they are. They are just saying, eat me, eat me, uko ukambani, eat me. But you see, even in, in, in Kisumu, in Kondele, near Kondele, at the, what they call Kawash, near there, there are mangoes that are saying, nijaribu, wone, big ones, grafted mangoes. So what I'm saying is that even where you are, the Lord wants to use you that place. He has interest of that place because where Elijah was, God was training him. Let God use that place and turn you into anointed servant that he can use. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So as he grew in that Gilead place, he was earnest to God. He heard about Jezebel tearing down the altars, slaying prophets, building temples, and replacing the altars of God with idols. He heard all that, but he was still training. He was waiting for his time. What was this single man of God going to do? Could one man really make a difference? And I say, yes. All what it takes is one man with God. Only one man with God. Because sometimes you think when we are in a mob, we are going to, be to, we are going to succeed. But a mob, psychology can only psych you. You know, when, when, when I was growing up, we used to fear the University of Nairobi. When there is a riot, you could not pass by there. Because comrade power... Even now they say comrade power. If you had comrade power and you had gone to visit your girlfriend at a place called the queue, you had to run for your life. Because you don't know whether the comrade power and you a bigger. So you have to run for your life. But you know, when those comrade power leave, 
leave that place like Francis Kamunya. He leaves that place. Eh? So he is alone eh, somewhere. We don't know where that power goes. So please get to know the guy next to you. Are you from Nairobi University? Just ask them, where did your power go? But you know, blessed is the person who he has the power of God while in campus because even when you leave, you live with the power of God. It doesn't leave you. You are comrade with power because the Lord goes with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he grew. Elijah comes along and he says, I am tired of the mess. You see, friends, for this year of open heaven, what will help you is to get to a place you say, enough is enough. The confusion, enough is enough. The, this uh, frustration and manipulation, enough is enough. My sickness, my sorrow, my pain, enough is enough. You'll get to a place where you get mad of your situation. Because you see, when you get mad of your situation, you are going to walk to industrial area to look for a job. When you are so mad about your situation, you will not even fear to go and get a trench and lima lima in the trench. I have seen some guys come here to clean the church. But when you probe them a little, you find out they have their own degrees. You find them, what are they doing? They have decided. Sikai, sikai. itanikuta. itanikuta. Sio mimi. You know, sometimes that's what it will help you. You get to a level you say, enough. So what Elijah was saying, no, I cannot be pushed any further. So enough is enough. I will defend my quarter. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that when he started allowing his life to be used of God. Because when you allow frustration to come into your life, you become a lupo. You start backsliding. You go through life in motion. You, you become afraid and scared. You become one of the 7,000 that are hidden somewhere. You cannot talk. You cannot say anything. And Elijah did not know there were other 700. He thought it was himself. But he knew him and God. They were more than victorious. So he goes to Ahab and he tells Ahab, Ah, hakuna mvua. Hakuna. Now you can imagine you are telling the king who can kill you. But this guy knew nobody can kill me unless my time has come. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So all things can push a man towards a revival. It can push you to a place where you say enough is enough. In your family, you can push you. Enough is enough in your business so that you can arise. In the book of James chapter 5 verse 17, the Bible says Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. But yet he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. He was a man like you and I. So if Elijah could do it, you can do it. Tell your neighbor you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. If Elijah was able to do it, you can do it. Elijah wanted to be fulfilled. And Elijah wanted the revival. He desired to see God stand up and show the people that he was there. So whatever Elijah starts to do, he's gearing it to something. So he tells the king it is not raining, there will be no food, and he waits for God. You know, sometimes when we declare things, all what we need is to wait on God. You have declared it, you have said it, now wait on God, let God have his own way. So after a while, there are three things that I want us to see. The miracles during the shutdown. Miracles during the shutdown. And these are about four principles that I think are helpful. And we can pick them from the story here. Just a series of principles that we can find when the heaven's gate is shut down. Number one, something unclean can provide for the holy. In other words, God is not limited to my supply. He can use anyone and anything. He can use anyone and anything. God is awesome. It's only that when God does it sometimes, because he doesn't do it the way we want, we behave like Naman. In 1974, we are praying, boys and girls are planning to go to Joro. 
and uh, we wanted to go by train. So we are preparing to have Kaugali there and uh, so on. And we were many. We were about more than 10 in a small Karum in uh, Thika, Ofafa. And our brother who was owning the house had only a kasafuria of a boy in high school. So it is not a big one. And you want to cook ugali for about 12, 13 people. So we were going to eat in shifts. So ugali for shift number one came in. When water was taken out for shift number two. Sasa unajua tamukoro haijashoshwa. Yo unajua bari ya sufuria. So you are cooking with mukoro also for the next lot. But when the sufuria was taken out and the stove was burning because he was using a stove and stove was outside, a little boy, hardly two and a half years, spoke. And the boy spoke words like this. The stove will be stolen. <laughs> and the lady who had it Ask the child again, what did you say? And the guy could not remember what the guy said. It was done. So anyway, the, the girl came back and she did not tell us. We continued to praising and those that were eating, we started eating. The rest of us were waiting for the next round. When the water boiled, because you timed the water. So now the guy that was going to cook this other round, when they went out, they did not see the stove. They did not see the, the sufria. Both the sufria boiling and the stove were not there. So he's asking, Muriweka upandegani? Ninja upandegani? I have been told by people when they lose their vehicle, how they look at even under another car. <laughs> no, the car was here. They look at another under another one. Or in the trench, they wonder imenda wa, kwani imenda wa. So that's what happened. So the lady comes and he says, I was told, but I ignored. You're hearing this. So sometimes God will always, He will always bring a word to us. But sometimes we shut it off. God is going to supply our needs according to His riches and glory. Don't shut them off because He can use. A person that you don't expect. Some of the people that bless us are people that are our enemies. But when God used to tell them to come and bless us, receive the blessing from the Lord. Because even the devils can be used to come and bless you. Even the devils. I told you the story of this woman that for three days she had known me when she was praying to the Lord. And she was old. She was faithful to the Lord. She prayed God. And she prayed aloud. She was a Pentecostal one. And she prayed aloud. Mungu, waifrahebu, unikumbuke chakula kibeisha, nipe chakula amina amina, amina. Jirani ya kaskia. Kaenda supermarket ya kanunuwa chakula. Oh, tairu, naweza nunuria mze. Umununuri ndende na amba osho. Na umununuri chakula so. Mbokoi. Ile you know, he thought the lady will say, go with your things. But the lady could not say so. She picked her things and said, God can use even the devil. <laughs> now that is simply saying, Eve have prayed and God has answered whatever the source that is, I'm going to receive that which God has supplied. Remember the story of Peter. Peter is praying and he is angry. And he's brought in even things that are unclean. And Peter is telling God, I cannot eat this. And God says, how can you call? How dare you? Call that which I say is clean and clean. When God supplies, because God can use anyone. Tell your neighbor, God can even use you. God can use anyone. He's able to use anyone. 
So that is a principle that when the heavens are shut, you cannot keep on waiting on one window. When I was a student in Sweden, I got a message that somebody was going harassing my mother. And this is my brother. And I felt so bad. There I'm a student and so on. And I prayed to God and I prayed shouting. God, I want to go home. But in my mind, I thought God can only come through the post office. Because that's how I used to get my pocket money. The churches that are preached in Sweden are normal. And they would come on Friday. So every Friday, where would I go? To check the letters. As I saw the guy bring the letters, I would go there, nothing. Go there, nothing. For a whole month, and I'm praying, God, hear me. The students that are with me gave me money and they surprised me. They are students. They gave me money. Because you behave, come at David. But you are David, if you find When he said, oh, if I can get some water. And when the water came, he poured it out. When these guys gave me money, I did not come. I reached London and came back. You know what I say? Hata nikiwa kuli atae kumpiga, atampiga tu. Kwa hivyo ya enderee na shimuli zake. But I got to London and then I went back to school and finished. The point is, God can use anyone. So don't ignore even the guys that are next to you. Because God uses people. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When the heavens are shut, be conscious of how God is going to lead you. Because God will lead you to places. Hallelujah. So immediately on the heels of Elijah, Ab goes after him. And God uses a bird to deliver. A raven to deliver. And ravens, they are bringing food and they, the food they are bringing in the food they like. Najwe ni kupatia mtu akuletee nyama na anapenda nyama. Kweli kabisa na aumi hata kidogo. Basi wewe ni Mungu. Tamaa inaenda wapi? This bird is carrying and I like imagining, and this is my own imagination. This is nobody who told me. The order would be, Reven, stand up! And the Reven would stand up. Fly to Egypt! Go to where Pharaoh is eating breakfast. And Pharaoh is eating some kanyama warm. So the thing gets a warm meat. And order, take it to my servant when it is hot. So, kanachomwa, kandeke kanachomwa, kanachomwa, lakena kanaumeridia, kanaumeridia. Umeridia, yes. And then it gets to where Elijah is, drops it. Now Elijah can say something. I sit a kula in the end again. No, Elijah, and I kianguka. And I wake up sawa sawa. And I kula sawa sawa. Nyama na mkate. He survived on nyama choma na mkate. Toast. Imepakwa blueband. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The point that I'm bringing is, when the heavens are shut, you should be careful to look at the ways that God can use. Because God has a thousand and one ways that he can use. He can turn the situation to something fantastic. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I will not continue with that more than that. The second thing that I find when the heavens are shut is a little can accomplish a whole lot. A little can accomplish a whole lot. Remember that something unclean can provide for the holy, but even a little can accomplish a whole lot. God can allow your brook to dry. Now tell your neighbor your brook can dry. Actually tell them, serious, tell them sometimes your brook will dry. You know, brook sometimes dry. Business can akauka. You know, kule umeandikwa unafutwa. Sawa. Eh, na sangine unafutwa na hakuna kitu umefanya. Wamekuangalia tu roho yao na yao ikakuwa ni kama wanaangalia. 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. Alafu wanasema all the sevens mwana nyumbani. And then you happen to be on the seven on that time. So you go home. Actually when it dries up my only concern will be God what next and where next. Not arguing because our biggest challenge is to argue. Elijah is told now, rise up. There is a woman somewhere who will supply for you. Period. There is a woman to supply for you. 
That's it. There is a source for you. That's it. Walk towards your source. Walk towards where the Lord has a source for you. Because where the source is, he's going to supply that which he wants to supply for you. A little can supply, can give you much. God shuts the heaven. But he sends his servant. So God decided to show that he is still God in charge. And in charge of his servant, he takes his servant to a little village. To a little village. So Elijah is asking this widow, can you give me something to eat? And the widow replies, we are getting ready to die. Imagine, the widow is saying, you are asking us something to eat and we are preparing to die. But that was a good lady. When another one who wants to join the dying crab comes, she said, it's okay, we'll bake one for you, but you'll also die, we'll bake one for us, and we'll also die. We are baking ourselves to die. We will die. We are going to eat this little that we have here, and when it is gone, we are going to die. Your need can sometimes be the root for someone else's miracle. I say again, your need can be the root for someone else's miracle. It is just difficult to see it sometimes. And through my own hunger, someone else will benefit. When I'm hungry, a kiosk somewhere benefits. That's why when God shuts down the heaven, he had already decided that there were going to be a string of miracles that are going to happen so that Elijah can know these are miracles and it's only God who is doing it. 1 Kings 17, 12 to 14. And it she said as long as the Lord liveth. I have not a cake but a handful of meal in my barrel. And a little oil in, in, in cruise and behold I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Then Elijah said fear not go and do as thou hast said. Just go and do what you have said. Don't change. But make me therefore a little cake first. Go. Do what you have said. Eh? But make me a little one and bring it to me first. And make the rest for your son. And then Elijah immediately. Because of our obedience, Elijah says, For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, here the lady wants to die. She's preparing to die. But her miracle is connected to a man who comes and asks for a meal. He comes to ask for a meal. And the lady provides the meal. And the prophet prophesies to her. Yes, you have a little meal. You have a little oil. But your little meal and a little oil can accomplish a whole lot. All you have is a little meal. The woman says, may the Lord supply the little meal. All you have, the woman said, is a little oil. May your oil never cease. All you have is little money. May the little money that you have never stop to flow. All you have is a little influence. Even that little influence, may it continue being felt. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, Samson, all oh, what you have is a, is a jawbone. Use the jawbone to glorify the Lord our God. Oh, David, all oh, what you have is a sling and a little lock. Oh, use it for the glory of the Lord. Oh, Rahab, all oh, what you have is a thread, a scarlet thread. But that scarlet thread will deliver you and save you. All oh, what you have is a little opportunity. Use the opportunity before you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All what I have is this little but God wants to use it. The third thing that I find in this life when the heavens are shut is that past blessings does not cancel future trouble. You can read it on your own, 1 Kings 17, 17 to 24. See, friends, sometimes we dwell in the past. By the rivers of Babylon, 
uh, uh, Psalms 137. There we sat down and yes, we wept when we remembered Zion. You see, the part, they, they were, that's a very interesting story because the children of Israel were told, if you read when they were going to, to captivity, they were told, you'll be there for 70 years. You know, 70 years is a long time. I'm not, I'm not yet 70. 70 is a long time. 70. 70. 70 is a long time. 70. 70. Unaoa. Unapata watoto. Watoto wanaolewa. Wanapata watoto. 70 ni miaka mingi. Unanunua shamba. Unapanda kahawa. Na unavuna. Unanunua shamba. Unapanda majani na unaanza kupata bonus. Yaani miaka 70. Mwambie jirani yako tia kuudhia miaka 70. Miaka 70 ni mingi. Usipuuze miaka 70. So what does God tell them? He tells them when you go there as captives, do business there. Do business. You know there are some people that amaze me. They are refugees at Kakuma, but they are the wealthiest refugees in Kakuma. What happened? They landed, started selling. But there are others that will keep on buying from them forever. Now, nini mulitoka? Kwini. Nini nima? Teka. Hiyo ndi wa hadi. Mutaishi kukwa mda mrefu. Enda watoto wa some shule za kule. Watoto wakipata wake, wacha waowe. Na wasijana wenu, wacha waolewe. Wacha kukaa. Uh, but this group of people by the rivers of Babylon, the Bible says they sat down and they wept when they remembered. I'm saying your past victories is not a guarantee for victory in the future. But in the future, we have the victory for the future. We have the blessing for the future. We need to look the future with the blessing of the future. Now imagine, if, you, if God gave you victory, when we were fighting with the Maasai, the Kikuyus had spears. The Kambas had arrows. Wakamba walikuwa atari sana. Hita ya wakikuyu na wakamba. Kwanza wakamba wakitui, they had arrows. Si tunakuja na... Na mkuki. Na mkuki kapla. La, mkuki natakaka tusongeani. Sindio? Ama uwe karibu sana. Lakini mshale. Mutu wanaweza kujivitia we Bari tu apanye tu nyua. Apanye chua. So imagine you want a victory with a mshale. You, are you sure you want to win the battle today? People with the gun with a mshale. Siyo ndio vita tulipigwa na wazungu. Because wachawi walifanya biyashara. Wana tupaka maji, wanasema hii maji ni mekupaka, hata risazi na bunduki, haiwezi ingia. Unasikia, eh, ninasikia, alafu unaenda maji maji rebellion. Wa Tanzania wanagongwa, 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 wanagongwa. You know, hata hapa Kenya, unaona masai na mkuki, anaenda kupigani na mtu wanakona bunduki. Hayo vita uwezi shinda. Kwa hivyo ushindi wajana, hebu ujue uwezi utumia sasa, mbinu zimebadilika. Sisi, watu ya miaka ile, pornography ilikuwa vitabu tunanunua town. Sidiyo? Waze, si pornography ilikuwa vitabu tunanunua town. Can I tell you for sure, high views are with squeezy. Hazina wateja, kwa sawa pornography hiko katika kile mboja wenu. Hebu fanya simi yako hivi. Iko hapo hata kama ujui. Najua kuna wengine ya wajui kwa sabu, hawa jaitafuta. What I'm saying is, the battles that we are fighting now, pornography. Ni tofauti na vita tulipiga na kule. Ile ni ya magazine zilikuwa zikushu wa kule town. Lakini sasa tumegundua vijana hawanunui hizo. So the victory that I got then in the 70s, I need to prepare myself well in this year because of the uh, digital, the internet and so on. The battle changes. So the victory of Elijah when he had revenge to provide for him, at this point, he needs to know he has to change. Past blessing, do not cancel future trouble. Why? Because the future trouble will need a new mechanism to win them. You need new mechanism to win them. I'm going to just 
ask myself that God would help us. Sometimes we look at our children. When they do eight, they get over 400 bucks. And I normally tell them, it's not a guarantee that you'll get an A, that you, you passed in, in, in Cornerstone. But I normally tell them, if I were you, when I land in high school, I will start being position 1 to 20. Because A is in the hapo. Lakini ukilala ujikute 200. Kutoka 200 ukuje between 1 and 20. Kibarua hiyo inakuwaga ngumu. Kwa sababu marks zimeenda zikiziti. And that is the truth of the whole matter. So I normally tell people, ukitaa kwenda marathon ya high school. Kikundi cha watu wa kwanza hamsini katari ya pale. Hiyo marathon. Uwe unawatisha tisha kidoko. Unakuja kuminambili, kuminatani. Kumbi, kuminasiti. Kwa sababu kupata hea atakuwa 50. Tunaza pata hea, sindiyo? But the group you are fighting with is in that group. So don't relax in life. When you are victorious yesterday, remember you need to work more now that you have gotten somewhere else. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now I want to bring this to a close. Because my time is, is just up, you will give me another two, three minutes. Because I want to say this. Another principle I find here is this. What acts up or is puffed up has to be exposed. In other words, for you to win the battle that you have in your life, anything that opposes you has to be exposed. And what Elijah was doing all this time was to expose Ahab and Jezebel to a level that they can have a match. Oh, that you can have a match. Jezebel, I want to fight with you, but I want to make sure that you feel it. Three and a half years, they were chasing Elijah, and Elijah was not hiding himself. He was there with that woman, eating in that woman's place, a place which was very near. It was Seraphat, and it was near Samaria. That was the place where Elijah, he was not hiding. So the time arrived, and now he says, now this is the time, enough is enough. He goes to Ahab, and the Bible says, in chapter 18, verse 17 and 19. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? But he answered and said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have, uh, have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou have fo followed Bal Balim. Now therefore send and gather to me, O Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of the groups, 400, which eat at Jezebel. In other words, Elijah is saying, enough is enough, I'm ready for war. In actual fact, you need to get so annoyed that you are saying, I want all the things that have struggled me. I want you to be exposed. I want you to be exposed so that I can have a battle with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ab is like your flesh, weak, waffling, weaning. And there are times that we, 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 we need a full-blown confrontation with the flesh. Ephesians 4, 17, 22. The business of confrontation of work in you, you have to confront some things before the fire is going to fall. And some of these are walking in vanity of your mind. Fire has to come down. A darkened understanding. Fire has to come and burn it. Being alienated from the life of God, fire has to come and burn it. Ignorant that has ruled long enough, fire has to come and burn it. Blindness of heart, fire has to come and burn it. Given over to lasciviousness, fire has to come and burn it. Walking in uncleanness, fire has to come and burn it. You have to confront it. Paul says to put all these things off. Then he says in 23, to 32. Paul says, after that, fire will come and burn, but in the place be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man. Hunger for righteousness and holiness. Put on the truth. Put on long suffering. Give yourself to labor. Let purity flow from your mouth. Let encouragement flow from out of your life. Pursue the spirit of God. Embrace kindness. Walk towards forgiveness. Paul is saying, this is what you're going to do. There is fire that we need over those things that put us down. Remember the confrontation 
is nothing. And the man of God says, go you fast. In verse 28, they climbed up on the altar. That is chapter 18. In verse 28, they cried, screamed, and wailed in an effort to implore Baal. They cut themselves until blood was pouring. Verse 29, they prophesied all day and nothing happened. They proved out the fourth point. What acts up is about to be exposed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this is the way the devil works best. Whenever he's about to be exposed and thrown out of comfortable surroundings, he starts acting in all manner of loud and acute ways. But you know what? The Bible gives us victory. And I pray that God will expose the things that have put you down for long. May they be exposed because once it is exposed, I tell you, once you know this is it, this is it, this is it, if you, if you see it, this is it, you are going to be victorious. So my, from my personal life story, you know, personal life stories. One time, a thief came into our house and me and Alice knew the thief is inside. We talked with low voices and we agreed the thief is near the kitchen at the dining. Near the kitchen at the dining. I didn't have a weapon, so I moved out. There was a spanner 22 in the room, so I pulled the spanner 22. For you that are driving, 22 is close to the one that can open your window. So it's Nikikubwa. So I carried it and tiptoed towards where the enemy was. I listened and I followed. I followed. And finally I saw where the enemy was. There were some cockroaches that were inside. A paper bag. So I felt so humiliated. But I knew, I saw now the enemy has been exposed. So he went back and slept. May your enemy be exposed. Then another time the devil the, the thief scared. This time, real thief scared. They entered through the, the kitchen. They cut the grills of the kitchen, came inside, carried a few things, but they wanted more. They wanted like electronic. But thank God that I did not have a TV. You know, I stayed for quite a while without a TV. And I so what, what we had the gate because our house had the gate. We had the gate, somebody leave the conji down deep and grew. So we had it, and I woke up and I beat. And I told Alice, Real, you are right. We are the movie unit, and the devil has been Kamoja. Kitu ingine ya mbeba. Kana mbeba kitu zangu. Nika muangalia. Haka ingia kashule karikuwa kana hitu wa makuidi ya mwapo. Wale wa zamani huko. Anajua kuna kama makuidi ya mkarikuwa karibu na kwa. Sa nika ambia hali zembo tutunguze kwanza tujue ni wangapi. Tukisha ajua ni wangapi tunajitetea. Because once you see and your enemy is exposed, you can handle anything. So I saw it was only one guy. So I told Alice, Piga Nduru. Na mi ni katoka. Ni kakimbizana na jama. Ni kakimbizana jama. Haka wacha vitu zangu haka toroka. Ali toroka na speaker moja. So I lost only one speaker. The rest of the things I brought them back. The neighbors came with the mapangas later when I chased them. You know why I was bold? My enemy was exposed. If your enemy is exposed, chase him. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the life of Elijah, we can learn many principles. But one of the principles is that may our enemies be exposed. May the things that bring us down be exposed. Because once they are exposed, 
we can confirm in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise in that.